Namaste and welcome to Geeta's Kitchen. And uh, as part of our celebration for International Women's Day, we are again with uh, Dr. Preeti. It is a very, very proud moment of, for me. I feel very proud when, as a woman and as a very professional doctor, very brilliant doctor, she is sharing her expertise with so many of us all over the world and ready here to answer all our questions. Welcome, Dr. Preeti. Thank you. Okay. So, after last uh, time's episode, many of you have asked me a number of questions uh, to be asked to Dr. Preeti so that you get the correct answers from her. So, first of all, a few questions. One of my subscribers had asked me, when does this hormonal game really end? You know, with these uh, ups and downs of uh, insomnia and then depression, anxiety, maybe repeated urinary tract infections. Does it really end or is it one has to go through all this for a long time? See, uh, mostly what you are asking me is more or less of uh, menopausal symptoms, yes. what uh, you are asking me. There is no treatment for menopause, but the only treatment we can give is to control the symptoms. And how bad are the symptoms? Like say, if they are having hot flashes, we can do medical, non-medical, home remedies. Okay. We can do things like that. And uh, we will touch that topic in depth. And like we discussed, we will talk about menopause in depth. Okay. Uh, the, what I like to uh, want to say is, we have to learn how to handle these hormonal issues that we get. I am really sorry to say there is no treatment for menopause at all. It never really ends. We just learn to accept certain things that menopause does to us and work around it so it doesn't really bother us too much. So maybe some changes in our lifestyle would also Definitely. improve with yes, the yes. problem a lot? Like uh, getting good rest, okay. having a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid, how do you have a good night's sleep? I am trying my best to have a good night's sleep but I am not even. Correct. Avoid smoking before you, at least 5 hours before going to bed. Avoid alcohol before going to bed. Avoid caffeine in the evening time. Like if you are used to having coffee, try to avoid it and have it before 4 o'clock. So we give a good gap. And if you have hot flushes, you mm -hmm. know what people call, talk about, I suddenly start sweating for 5 minutes and then I am normal. Avoid, try to manage your hot flushes. Figure out what triggers your hot flush. Mm -hmm. Like for some women, hot coffee, hot beverages trigger hot They flush. break into a sweat. sweat. Exactly. See, actually I have heard about hot flushes, but I never went through it. So is it necessary that everyone should no, go no, through no, it? Or is it just a common problem? Every woman has different postmenopausal symptoms. Okay. And each woman, like I always tell my patients, each woman is unique. Okay. Each person's body is unique. So how they react to menopause, their body reacts is going to be totally different from their own sister, probably even from their twin. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. It will be very different from their mother, it will be very different from their sister, very different from their grand, uh, grandmother. And some people might say, we are soul sisters, we have the same menopausal symptoms, but it's a lie. Okay. We will never have the same menopause. So it's body constitution. Yes. Okay. So we have to understand our own body mm -hmm. and we have to learn to manage with it. And we are all here to help you manage with it. Fantastic. Uh, another uh, subscriber, her name is Nisha Joshi, yes. She had asked me what causes irregular periods and heavy uh, blood flow during the periods. What is the reason and what can be done about it? Yes. See, there are hormonal causes. We will divide this. Okay. There are hormonal causes that is in our body. And there are physical causes. Let's say we go to the physical causes first. It is because of sudden weight gain, sedentary lifestyle, you are not having enough exercise. Mm -hmm. All this can cumulatively form hormone imbalance in your body and then you might suddenly have irregular cycles. Okay. Second point, when you come to hormonal, you can have irregular cycles when you develop polycystic ovaries, thyroid issues which are not controlled because mm -hmm. most of the time a lot of people miss thyroid. Mm -hmm. They like, they don't have symptoms. Irregular cycles is a symptom. Okay. okay. And like I said, sudden weight gain, which can again cause polycystic ovaries. And most importantly, when you have heavy flow and very painful periods, always, like I said in the last video, go for a scan. When you go for a scan, you might figure out if you have fibroids, you can have adenomyosis. These are all conditions which cause a swelling of the uterus or endometriosis. This can be from by uh, from the time you attained your periods, it can be then or it can be just that, you know, it was genetically 
हो सकता है फाइबर्स भी यू नो यू कैन हैव फाइबर्स सो बेटर टू और ऑलवेज वेट टू फिगर आउट बाय अ स्कैन एंड देन ओनली प्रोसीड विद ट्रीटमेंट डोंट टेक मेडिकेशन इफ सम डॉक्टर सेज जस्ट टेक इट और एनी बडी सेज टेक ऑफ दिस पिल यू विल बी फाइन डोंट अनलेस इट हैज टू यू हैव डायग्नोस्ड इट एंड देन टेक द राइट ट्रीटमेंट वंस और ट्वाइस अ ईयर इररेगुलर साइकल्स आर नॉट you don't have to worry about oh, okay. it okay once or twice a year our body kind of resets itself it's okay but if this is recurring then okay. you get your treatment then you get your uh, blood test then you get your scan once if you have a hard uh, irregular cycle don't break your hip it happens to everybody just let it go if it recurs the second time your periods are irregular or the flow is extremely heavy extremely painful you need to go for tests that's perfect Then she also wanted to know is about the diet. Is there any particular food which we eat during our periods, or foods we should avoid during that time? Okay. Anything in particular like that? Okay. One, we need to. I need. I want to make this very clear because a lot of women think it's dirty blood. Then it's it's dirty blood. Let it come out of the body during that time. Don't eat this. Don't do this. Nothing like that. A period when you get a period, it shows that your body is healthy. One. Mm. Your body is healthy that you're getting your periods on time. Okay. Second, periods should not be something that should stop a woman from doing anything she wants. Mm. It should not be like, oh, I can't go swimming. It's rubbish. You can use the right kind of tampons. You can use the right kind of swimsuits. You can exercise. You can swim. You can do whatever you want to do. Periods are very hormonal and physiological phenomena of the body. You, there is nothing that you shouldn't eat this you shouldn't eat that you can eat anything and your body will talk to you if you really listen you will have certain cravings for certain food like some women say i feel like drinking aerated drinks at that time if it's healthy for you please go ahead and drink it if it's like a small glass have it. some women say i feel like eating only chocolate eat it as long as you don't yes, have your body yes, yes as long as you don't have diabetes eat it Whatever makes you comfortable. So, because the next question is also associated. She said, "Can we do workouts during periods?" Absolutely. So that should not be an excuse. Not at all. Not at all. If you feel like working out in your periods, work out. If you don't feel like working out, don't work out. No. But only thing is, your periods should not decide whether you work out, whether you study, whether you lay down. You want to take rest. It's up to you. No one will decide for you. You can do everything you do when you don't have your periods. you can do it during your so it depends on how strong you feel yes so how mentally you feel at that time okay. some women during their periods have these hormonal surges where they just want to relax okay. there's nothing wrong let them sleep yes. some women are hyperactive they want to work out a lot more so you do do whatever you feel like doing periods should not stop you from yeah. ruling the world at all another important question dr preeti especially for women 45 plus which they feel very embarrassed to ask a doctor or even share with their own family members but which they go through silently and that is urinary incontinence right. which is nothing but leakage of urine right. say when they cough or sneeze or even uh, laugh Correct. it happens and it's uncontrollable what can be done about this uh, mostly in uh, menopausal women we see these urinary incontinence symptoms Like uh, you're suddenly jumping, you're dancing, you're you're very happy, you're laughing. You'll see urine uh, mm -hmm. dribbling down. This happens because the hormones reduce in your body. Okay. Okay. A hormone called estrogen. Once this happens, there are two things that we can do. One, make sure you do Kegels exercise. Mm -hmm. Kegels exercise. We can just uh, just see a YouTube video. It is an exercise to tighten the muscles of the in and around the vagina okay. and the urinary area. So you. Yeah. Yes. 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 You contract the muscles, relax the muscles. You contract it, relax it, and there is no specific time for doing this exercise. You can do it while you're cooking, while you're watching TV, while you're sleeping, while you're reading your novel. You can do this. Kegels exercise is physically you're tightening the area, which really works. Mm -hmm. And I normally tell my patients even before they start hitting menopause to start the Kegels exercise so that they don't even have to ever see this yes. urinary incontinence. But even now, when they have urinary incontinence, you should start doing the Kegels exercise. So will that alone help? No, no, no. Along with that, for night about fifty percent of the women, just Kegels exercise helps. Okay. Second is hormone therapy. Hormone therapy is local, where we give you a very low dose estrogen after examining the lady. 
because estrogen can cause lots so of like side effects. Just apply it, it yes, okay. so that it tightens the muscles around the okay. and keeps okay. it lubricated so that the dryness also doesn't irritate mm -hmm. your urethra and cause urethra. This happens even when they get a cough, cough, cough yes, yes, any, any, strain, any, strain, any, any strain in your yes. body from here to here. Very so as if something is pressing yes, your bladder yes, and it just yes, leaks. Yes. So we apply like low dose estrogen, then the absorption rate is very little. Mm -hmm. That itself is good, but mm -hmm. that cannot be applied or prescribed or over the counter cannot be given mm -hmm. without a doctor's advice. Please, uh, viewers, do not use estrogen ointments without getting checked because not everybody requires it. Okay. Because it itself has side effects when not when used and not required. Okay. So only under a doctor's yes, guidance. Yes, yes. Okay. So that's I think if the exercises itself yes. and maybe and also if you are a little on the heavier side, huh. losing a little weight will really help. Around your abdomen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And walking every day, the usual. And when you have this urinary incontinence problem. Mm -hmm. My advice will be whether you feel like urinating or not, every hour go past urine so mm -hmm. that the bladder is empty. When the bladder is a little empty, the chances of when you do Kegels exercise, it tightening will be much, much higher and much better. Okay, okay. So I think that's a good yes. point. One can easily do it. Yes, more. pass urine every hour, whether you feel like passing urine or not, even the little bit of urine, let it come out. Second, do the Kegels exercise. Even after that, nothing is working. Meet the gynecologist, we will prescribe you the right ointment. Because it affects our social life. Yes, so even at person. home, if I am sitting on a chair like this, it's fine. Yes. But if the person is sitting on a upholstered sofa, you feel bad that yes. that place is going yes. to get bad. Yes. Or you visited somebody's house, you don't want to sit down, also sometimes it can be kind. Yes. That bad. So, okay. Then about another common problem of uh, PCOD. In very brief, what is it and in what age of women does it affect? Okay. Normally, from the day you get your period till menopause, your PCOD can affect anybody anytime. Okay. It all, like I said again, it is not hereditary. PCOD is not genetic. Your mother had it, so you're having. No, it does not. It is a lifestyle disorder. Okay. It's a lifestyle disease. If you are not exercising regularly, you do not have a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle as in you are not eating healthy diet, you are not working out, you lot of people sit at the desk and work all day. Mm -hmm. In such people we have to make sure you work, some kind of cardio has to be done. Okay. And sudden weight gain, all this together will cause PCOD. It's very important that you are an active person to avoid polycystic ovaries. Mentally mm -hmm. and physically. Okay. Yes. So active physics, we must have a routine of some form of physical exercise. Like I always say, like you brush your teeth, you have your bath, you should exercise every day. Exercise a, a walking a walk, is enough. A walk, a jog, but it has to be brisk walk. Okay. If you are going to start off, uh, say you are on the heavier side, mm -hmm. I would advise you first lose a few kilos mm -hmm. with your diet mm -hmm. so that your knees don't have a problem with the weight. Mm -hmm. Once you lose at least 2 kilos or 3 kilos with a the diet, then you start your cardio exercises like walking, brisk walking. It can't be like a stroll in the park. Mm -hmm. It can't be like, oh I am going to talk on the phone and walk. It can't be that. It has to be a walk where you are brisk walking and your heart rate is high. That's the only. That's why we say cardio because your heart is working, pumping more, is going to take up all the. Minimum for how much time? Do we need minimum to thirty minutes. So a thirty minute walk, either morning or evening, yes. whenever we have that. Yes, time. I think we should all definitely do it. Yes, no more joints. Yes, and that again. Now because of menopause, do we become overweight? Is um, that a side effect of menopause? No, menopause per se will not cause weight gain, but uh, it could be one of the symptoms that we see because menopause, some women go into a depression state because of the hormones. Mm -hmm. So, when that happens, you are very A motivated. You find comfort in food. A lot of women, we find comfort in food. Yes. We find comfort in just staying at home, watching TV, reading something, you know, and our activity level comes down. With age also. Why I am saying this? Because somebody has gained weight. Yes. Are you going to menopause? So that is because that is that's how they are yes, that's, That is because they are slowly reducing their activity. But they are not reducing their food intake. 
they are eating the same amount of food or probably a little more but their activity level is come down so their calorie intake is more calorie burning is less it so, happens because some people when they are tense they may not eat but there are many others especially women when you are tense or anxious you just open up whatever dabba you find and yeah it's called it comfort comfort yes we do that i do that I eat a lot of just eat mindlessly because yes. you are worried about something, but that's a normal yes, reaction yes. which happens. Which is again, right. it is very hormonal. Okay. Your stress levels cause hormonal havoc. Okay. Because we are doctors, we know. Oh my God, this is thing. Let me just take one bite and stop. Mm. But lot of women have the craving that I am not full yet. You know. Mm. So they because of the hormone levels. So, they so they're they're, yes, yes. It's called comfort eating, which is. Uh, I'm not saying it's a disease or anything, but uh, uh, you have to learn to control it oh. mentally. That's where your mental power comes in. See, but uh, if you look at it the other way too, see, fifty, forty-five, fifty. Let me say, is the age where the woman experiences the empty nest syndrome also. That is the time when your children are leaving the home and going out to college or getting married, and then I think certain people they start feeling okay, not useful right. anymore, and just staying at home, doing nothing. Again, a vicious circle, maybe. Ah, uh, see, the emptiness syndrome mostly is uh, one. Yeah, because everyone's going off. We are so used to having everyone around suddenly. Your yeah, busy life suddenly comes. Comes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. here. Yes. yes. That's why I say figure out something easier to do yes. so that your mind is more active. And mostly this happens not because everyone is gone because uh, uh, from the house. It's because you realize that you're menopause and you can never have a child again. That is also there. Till we hit menopause, we we know eggs bante jayenge. You know eggs are going on forming. We know we might get pregnant at any time if we want to. But once you hit menopause, you know for a fact that you are never going to have a child again. That affects you. Yes, mentally. mentally that's there somewhere in the back of our mm-hmm. mind because for some reason for generations we have been told your life is complete when you have a child. Mm-hmm. But I don't think so. I think life is complete when you are complete in your head. Yes, <laughs> healthy and happy always. Yes, Dr. Preeti. In the last video, you had mentioned some uh, food aspects Correct. for forty-five plus and pre-menopausal and post-menopausal women also. What they should yes. take. See, uh, like generally, uh, our uh, kitchen tips and all that to increase your estrogen levels because normally in menopause estrogen falls. Okay. So our whole idea is to increase it slightly so that our symptoms are a little uh, uh, reduced. Or manageable. Mm-hmm. So mostly in food items we have isoflavins and lignans. Okay, isoflavins मतलब क्या है? Soya beans, okay. lentils, chickpea and legumes. Okay. All these are isoflavins. Okay. These you can incorporate them in your food. It doesn't mean they have a way of converting that food into a little bit of estrogen when we take it. Okay. You can have it in any form. As long as you cook it and it's edible. So in yeah. simple terms, it is dals and chana. Correct. All kinds yes. of chana, kabhi yes. chana, kala chana. Correct. Uh, if, if you just work. yes, if you mm-hmm. just type postmenopausal food, like Google it, you will get a list of things that are available. Okay. Like uh, even fish oil is supposed to work, but mm-hmm. again, there are no proven studies. But there have been people who have used this, like a huge study group, which says that it was effective. Okay. Yeah. Then we have like uh, flax seed, flax seed, yes. some grains, whole grains, and there are specific type of fruits also, which might have. I'm talking about uh, fruits like your passion fruit, your sita fruit. But again, fruits we have to make sure your diabetes is under control, and then only take. So please don't take uh, fruits without checking your sugar levels. Oh yeah, spike in your insulin. Yes. Yes. yes, definitely. Then there's another person, Vini Fernandez. She wanted more about surgical uh, menopause with removal of both ovaries. Right. So she wants some more information. Right. Like See, like I said last time, when you remove just the uterus and your ovaries are left back, you have zero symptoms. Mm-hmm. Be- till you hit menopause naturally, because the ovaries are producing uh, the hormones. When the ovaries are removed, could be for any reason. Normally, your doctor will not remove your ovaries unless the ovaries have had some issues. So when that happens, your body suddenly hit menopause. Like today, if it's not given it time to cope, a natural curve has not come. Mm-hmm. So you just remove it suddenly. There's menopause. So what happens in these people? We have to supplement them with calcium. One. Okay. After checking your BP and all that, we have to supplement them with calcium. 
Second, you might feel hot flushes, everything, all of a sudden. You might have body pains, you might have depression, you might have loss of sleep, you might have uh, emotional uh, symptoms, um, you might not want to do anything. For in such patients, in such ladies, I wouldn't call you a patient because it is something which has happened, but uh, in such ladies, it's always better to start taking some hormone therapy by your doctor, where mm -hmm. we give you a little bit of estrogen. Um, very low dose and it cannot be given for a certain, more than a certain time. So estrogen should be taken only for a short time. Where the symptoms are not manageable. Yes, only then. And most importantly, when there is a surgical menopause, those patients need to get vitamin D supplementation so that their bones stay strong. And again, any calcium intake only after your doctor checks you up for the blood pressure. Okay. Okay. And, and one more thing for all ladies, whether surgical menopause or regular menopause, we need to make sure you go for meditation. We need to make sure yoga. They, these are all uh, added treatments. Yes, yes. Yes. These are alternative treatments. Yeah. They are not alternate therapy. They are not proven. But some women have said that it has been very effective. Yoga, acupuncture, uh, going for a good walk, your exercise, watching something that relieves your stress like uh, probably a comedy show or a stand-up comedy or your favorite movies where you can laugh a little bit and uh, hypnosis. But like I'm saying again, none of them have been proven. But a lot of women who have gone through these have said that it's effect, uh, given them good effect. Now, to the other side, contraception. Correct. OTC pills for contraception. How safe are they? See, OCP is nothing but oral contraceptive pills. These are, some are available over the counter, some, uh, but I would suggest, because all these pills have some mild amount in certain people, you cannot use them. Mm -hmm. Like for example, you are suffering with tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. OCPs will not work. So always meet your gynecologist. And what we get now, like say what we are getting now in the market, like fourth generation OCPs, they have zero side effects. But again, not everybody should use OCPs hmm. without getting checked because OCPs for polycystic ovaries are very different from OCPs for non-polycystic women. So we have to make sure that we check your BP, we check your weight, have you having issues of acne, all that will be taken into consideration and we will prescribe you the best OCP for you because if you prescribe the wrong OCP and you just take over the counter whatever you find in your hand, you might end up having a lot of nausea, you might have a lot of water retention, it might not even work for you. So it's not a good idea to just go and purchase no, a no, never, and never. That's why they don't even, OCPs are not even marketed and we don't see advertisements okay. about them. Okay. Recently you were talking of uh, vitamin D. The relationship between vitamin D and uh, bone strength, uh, Shobha, Shobha Pusha, the mm -hmm. See, uh, we need to understand that calcium is what gets the bones to get stronger by calcium and vitamin D and when you have enough vitamin D in your body there is a nice long chart like how each cell works in our body it has a cycle mm -hmm. before which for the calcium to get absorbed into the body for that we need vitamin D it's not that vitamin D we intake it goes directly into the calcium vitamin D from sunlight isn't it uh, yes, from sunlight, but obviously it's not enough. Not enough. Yes. Yeah. And how, how, how many of us are laying in the sun? Mm -hmm. And see, vitamin D absorption is higher among brown skinned people okay. and dark skinned people. The darker okay. your skin, okay. the faster the absorption rate. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D doesn't go directly into your bones, it, is, it helps the calcium to go into your bones. It helps the absorption of calcium. calcium. Correct. Okay. Okay. And there's another person, um, this is from Annie Jones, about calcium. She wants to know whether it is enough if we drink milk for calcium or any particular supplements are necessary. Right. First, the food we take, uh, of course, everything we have nowadays is a little adulterated, which we have to accept unless it's organic or something, which is proven time and again. We see so many videos. So, uh, Getting your calcium levels checked is not a bad thing. You can check it every three months. It's a simple blood test that we take or check one. Do not overdo your calcium unless it is low. 
not everybody requires supplements but after you hit menopause always better to take some amount of calcium after getting your blood pressure and your liver test general check up done do not take calcium just like that and food because it's a little adulterated and we can't force feed ourselves also what uh, like some people say what we get in 500 ml of milk calcium back in the day probably it was enough but definitely after we hit menopause Uh, the amount of food uh, calcium that gets absorbed from the bo- body from the food also reduces so i would say food is not enough okay and of course the question uppermost and i think everyone's mind weight management <laughs> <laughs> simple <laughs> tips um uh, i personally believe in intermittent fasting yeah. it has worked for me it has worked for a lot of people my uh, family members also it has worked um giving a good gap but then of course uh, some people some doctors have said that that itself can cause diabetes later on in life but it is again it is not proven okay uh, second keep your mind active and uh, once your mind is active half your battle is won don't think i know it's very difficult for it's very easy for me to say keep your mind active but trust me your body talks to you it will tell you that you are feeling hungry you don't need to eat it is just a psychological thing that you want to eat go watch a comedy show go watch a movie just keep your mind off it or get into a hobby mostly because the lesser you eat the easier you are going to lose weight and some um, be active exercise and if you require if you are sitting at the uh, watching a tv and you feel like simple tips which i follow you want a glass of water you you know our usual thing is ma can you give me a glass of water or whoever is there just call them and ask them instead get up go get it yourself ask somebody if they want you to do their work you know somebody wants like coffee or something go try to get it your, uh, yourself for them these little tips like you know when you want to pull clothes off uh, instead of telling your helper your domestic helper go get the clothes from the terrace try doing it yourself then it will be active in small simple steps yes yes. yes that is the start and once your mind goes on to your weight loss program then there's no stopping so i think i have tried to include all the questions which my subscribers have asked me and some of my own too yes and uh, before i wrap it up one question which <laughs> me and i'm sure all my viewers have What is the beauty of your glowing <laughs> skin? How is it such a beautiful glowing skin? So sweet. Please share it. Yeah. Um really speaking, one start with a lot of water. Your water, water intake has to increase. Again, I'm talking about water intake all this. Please make sure you are not overdoing your water also. Every hour make sure you drink one glass of water. Yes. I drink room temperature water. I do Whether thirsty or not, go by the door. One glass of water. water. That is 150 to 200 ml of water. Okay. Okay. That is your typical dining table. Cold water. hot. I take room temperature. Okay. Yes. I don't know whether cold water or hot water will make a difference. <laughs> I really don't know. But I take room temperature water. Okay. Then morning after my shower, I use rose water toner. I spray. We will do a video on this. Oh, that's I use the selection. Everybody will be waiting to watch and it. And uh, vitamin C serum. Okay. Moisturizer. Uh-huh. Sunscreen. We'll. I will do a, a lot light. of hard work. It's not the and easy. discipline. And yes. discipline. You Try have to do. Might be avoiding. They say that's bad for your no, skin. No, as skin. long as you're exercising. Okay. And for the skin, most importantly, discipline meaning. Discipline. You should do your routine skincare every day. Okay. okay. Every morning. Not late once and then. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm telling you, it will really work. Okay. And make sure you take a probiotic every day because if your gut is clean, your intestines are clean, your toxins are pushed out. That is a probiotic. Baby. Yeah, but it's not enough. Okay. It's not enough. Take a regular probiotic because in the next, in the uh, the life in in the video where we do our uh, skincare. Okay. I will show the probiotics. I'll show all my products. Okay. Then I will take this opportunity to request Dr. Preeti to do a live show exclusively on skincare. Done. Okay. For Done. the benefit of all the viewers of Geeta's Kitchen, hundred percent. So we look forward to that where she will share with us uh, yes. more tips. Anything else we can add? Water, sunscreen. These two things wow. and vitamin C. Three things. Okay. 
and healthy mind, healthy See, diet. Because you are not just going by ads, you are going by yes. living example. And okay. none of my products are expensive. Whatever I use are local market Kirana shop products. Okay. Or home remedies, remedies also. Maybe. And I'm sorry. Home remedies also. Home remedies nothing. Nothing. Okay. I don't use. See, but uh, uh, what I used to use when I was younger, we'll talk about that. I okay. used to use. Kasturi paspu with curd okay. and put it only in summer's butt. <laughs> Nobody really tells out their secrets. That I so know that's happy. Oh, I want everyone to look good. You already are good looking people, but there's no harm. <laughs> the world will be a much beautiful place. Thank you so much. Such a beautiful person, both inside and outside. Pleasure Thank meeting you, Dr. You. Prithi, and I'm sure all of us look forward to that uh, special uh, live show. 100%. I will announce the date soon on our community. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to Geeta's Kitchen and we'll be back with many more interesting videos on our channel. Thank you.